In the next exercise, we will use a Gantt chart, which is uh, good for project management, but also can visualize any data describing the uh, time of processing or activity. In our case, we've got the order date and also the ship date and the time between is the processing uh, until the shipment of our uh, deliveries. So we can create uh, a new column which will tell us how long it took and just uh, do the math to take the ship date minus the order date. This is just going to be a number. Uh, as you can see in here, we can easily spot right now two uh, problems with the data, probably uh, some kind of mistyping when inserting the data, but we will be interested in, in the orders that take over 10 days. Uh, so let's create a pivot table right now and let's insert order ID on rows. This is the order number and the row ID, this is the line of the order that has been processed. Then we will place after refreshing the pivot table also how long it took uh, as the number. We will change a bit the layout of the data we have. Uh, for example, we can uh, not show uh, the subtotals, turn off the grand totals and maybe Let's change the layout to the tabular form to better understand what's happening in here. And also one of the new things we will do is we will place the order date not on columns or rows, but on the values shelf as the first series that we have in here. It will automatically change to count of the order date, but I want this data to be summarized. This will just give me the minimum value or the maximum value for every line. This is just reflecting the structure of the initial uh, table, but we can also format the data to show the data itself uh, in the date format. This is the layout that we can in a second use to analyze the time of processing. But before we do so, let's just concentrate on the numbers greater than 10 days. So I select 11 days and using the shift button, I select all of the individual times we have in here in the how long column uh, until the end. This produces a small list of items that we can now try to visualize by using a two-dimensional bar graph. On this bar graph, uh, I will turn off all of the unnecessary buttons that we don't need uh, and also increase a bit the size of, um, of this chart. At the moment, it doesn't show us anything uh, serious, but as you will see in a second, we will uh, quickly play with this uh, chart. Let's maybe remove also the uh, legend of the chart and let's think of the dates that we have in here. What would be the minimum value that we can see on the order date? The minimum value is somewhere near the Christmas uh, holiday uh, in the year 2012. So let's pick a date just before it, like 2012, 12, 19. Let's check what kind of date this is. This is Wednesday, so let's maybe change it to 17, uh, which is Monday. And let's check right now what is the number in here. It's this number reflects the date uh, for Excel and I will use this number, I can even copy it, uh, to set the minimum for my axis. Uh, this minimum will indicate where my data starts. And right now, as you can see, this data will be shown uh, better, but I need also to change the uh, chart type to not to be a simple clustered bar chart, uh, but a stacked bar chart. And right now you will see what I mean by a Gantt chart. If we turn off the colors from the first data series, which is just a technical series, we will be able to easily analyze the data and spot that at Christmas of the year 2012, we've had uh, some delays uh, or not satisfying results as regards uh, the shipment time. Uh, what can we do more? We can modify a bit the uh, x-axis on this chart to, uh, for example, introduce uh, seven days as the major unit uh, on it. Uh, by doing so, we will uh, create a weekly layout for the data we have. We can also rotate a bit the labels we have in there.